The title of the book, The Actor, and the author, Douglas Gardam. And Doug joins us now on iUniverse Radio. Hello, Doug. How are you today, Steve? Great to have you with us, and we're going to uh, be taken to Hollywood. This is, uh, well, it's a, it's a great love of yours. Very much so. It has been uh, for many years, and uh, we still are, uh, I think, one of those rare families that pretty much go to the movies once a week, believe it or not. <laughs> right. Well, the, the actor, as you put it, is a gripping story of persistence, hardship, and overwhelming joy as the main character, Ethan Jones, pursues his dream, and that's not always what it seems, as you put it. The actor learns he can portray anything he can imagine, but he also, of course, gets... Uh, this is kind of a gripping tale of a, a lot of different extremes of life, isn't it? Yes, uh, and, and that's what I was really trying to even accomplish with the story. I wanted to have something that was fun to read, um, obviously a uh, quick kind of thriller with plot and so on, but it's for those that like to read a story, have it, have it kind of revealed in okay, a couple of different levels as well. Well, before we learn more about Ethan Jones and all the different characters that surround him and some of the plot, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you uh, decided to write this. Well, I've had a love of light, a love of writing, uh, really since I was probably uh, a child. Um, in fact, my still kind of a joke in our family that uh, my parents found me in in uh, in my bed when I was around, I guess around three or four years old, with Winston Churchill's memoirs in my hand. Not that I understood <laughs> anything that was in the book, but my love of books and. Uh, Certainly from there, uh, turned into a love of writing. And I remember even in grade school, um, writing a short uh, passage that I was actually proud of based on Thor uh, Heyerdahl's uh, Contiki adventure that uh, got noticed. And then I fell into my teenage years, and of course, uh, lots of our lives changed, and uh, actually got very interested in music. And still had very much the creation and the writing part of that. We did a lot of our original music. Um, but had a lot of fun doing that at that point in time. But as your teenage years kind of end, you start trying to figure out what you're going to do with your life. And uh, I chose to uh, venture down the road of engineering. And uh, so I spent uh, my college years um, learning how to be an engineer, and then I spent most of my career in the engineering field. But I'd never lost my um, real desire for creation and creating things. And I've always found that outlet to be in writing, whether it be short stories, um, whether it be poetry, um, and in, even in the longer form of what uh, the actors uh, around us as far as the novel goes. Now, Ethan Jones, he is, um, I guess his great quest is to be on, be on the big screen. Yes. Um, even a little bit behind Ethan and kind of the formation of the story, I always thought it was kind of an interesting thing for a person who was in their place in life, shall we say, in their career, building whatever that is, and, and their friends and their family and their peers and relatives, all kind of picture them as a certain type of person. And I always thought, and this is, I think, where it comes out even in Ethan Jones, was the, the whole idea of that, but having a true love, a true dream to achieve it, and leaving all that to pursue that dream. And that's really kind of what comes about in the, the story of the actor and really where, where uh, it was inspired from. And he has his really big ups and downs emotionally. In fact, he's almost suicidal. Well, I think this is what sometimes happens is as we get into our careers or get into what we've chosen to pursue, because by and large... It takes a, as an amount of effort. Sometimes you get into those and realize maybe they're not necessarily what you want, and it, um, it's hard to change, to switch, to, to do something different. And it's even harder, I think, in the later teenage years when you've made that decision in disappointing friends and family of what you thought you wanted and then having a change to it. And I tried to bring that out early in the book where I think that's what he was really struggling with and then happened upon finding something that he, he, he was very connected with. And, th and there's a much deeper part to that um, in, the, in the story, but I think that's where that, that really stems from. 
And then he sees Krista White in the coffee shop. Yes, that's one of my favorite scenes. How this all comes about is, uh, is I'll say, certainly an interesting part of the plot and the story. But one of my favorite scenes is when he first really realizes he's meeting uh, Krista White. And it's in the middle of the night in the coffee shop, and she's just this, uh, you call it a beautiful angel it is, that, that he sees and, uh, and, and immediately falls in love with her. And also, I guess, is the answer to a lot of his struggles of someone who will believe in him. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I'll say even from a personal basis, because often, well, by and large, you try and write about, about what you know about. Um, and I don't know that I've always followed this, but I think a support structure is a very important thing in allowing you to, to really achieve what it is. Is, is your purpose here and what, what, your, what your goals are here. And what, I, what Ethan found um, in Crystal White was a person that um, didn't really challenge him from uh, whether it was good or bad, but it was just almost an unconditional support of what he was pursuing and what he wanted to do. Well, tell us some of the other characters that play an important part in this story. Well, in uh, in uh, college, um, his roommate Robbie uh, Johnson is a very important um, part in the in the in the story, and certainly as it unfolds, uh, another very smart guy. Um, they out, they had a movie connection, um, but had a kind of different different lives in growing up. Um, really early on, which is really on the cover too, and it's really the start, shall we say, when they're in the college years, is he falls in love with Mila Monaghan. And um, this is a college girl who actually introduces him to acting during college. And, uh, and really what he finds is his true calling or what he believes is his purpose. And he literally falls absolutely head over heels in love with this uh, this girl, and she introduces him to acting, and he finds out that it is is something that he really wants to pursue, and that's really where some of the things change because, um, and this is very early in the book, Neela literally disappears, and he doesn't quite understand where and how or what happens, and that's a very important obviously part of the story, which is why you want to read it to find out. <laughs> So this is a story really deals with self-discovery? Absolutely, Steve. It's a, it's a very internal story written, I'll say, with the, the obstacles and the forces, the, the things that we, the challenges that we deal with in life and how we go about them. But it's very personal. And as you read the story, and this is why I was saying early on, is there, there's the story you read but it's not necessarily always as it seems. And that's really, um, it's still really overcoming an enormous challenge, but it may not be exactly as you think it is as you're reading it. So it's a, it's really not a whodunit story. It's interesting that you say that because most people, especially in the early parts and early drafts, the big part people were always trying to determine was, oh, I know who did it. And I always found it intriguing, and I, I kind of like that, because it's not really a whodunit story. It's actually uh, a much more of a, as you said um, early on, it's much more of a self-discovery uh, story of Ethan Jones and what he goes through and to understand that. And as we took... The actor can imagine that the actor can portray anything he can imagine um, is a really an important kind of phrase for the for the story as a whole. Why the trip with his father to the Virgin Islands? This is an important part. I think there's a special relationship that happens between a father and a son, and that, and I think many of us struggle with it enormously. Because as we grow older, there's a challenge that happens between a son and a father. Um, and if they can find ways to communicate through those, I think they can have a, a truly very special relationship. And the trip in the story is really there to 
I'll say as a thank you from Ethan to his father, who hasn't always got along with him, but also some important parts of the story are revealed there that actually helps Ethan get over some of the, the tragic uh, circumstances that he's dealing with. Now, you've taken a, a second-person narrative. Uh, why did you choose to do it that way? I, I think probably it's, it's, it's a bit of my choice um, in wanting to tell a story about someone else. And putting it into the first person, I, I, I felt a little, um, uh, should we say, uh, uncomfortable with that, in that people were thinking it would be a story about me, and and it's it's not. There's obviously very much uh, uh, parts of me in it, but it's a story about um, an individual and how he deals with many of the things that happen in his life. The reason why I like the second person as well, though, is that I've been I, I like to go into detail with things, but in that detail, I also like to capture how that is being dealt with on an emotional way, level from the character's viewpoint. And I think bringing those together in a second, um, uh, second person narrative has allows me to do that more effectively than trying to tell that as a story in, in first person. So it's a story of overcoming tragedy. It's a story of chasing one's dreams. Uh, of course, there's, I guess there's some mental illness part of uh, the story. Well, it, it's, it, the reason why I, 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 I mentioned mental illness is because mental illness, uh, I'm certainly no expert in that area, but it takes many forms. And as you read the story, um, there's, there's obviously certain um, parts, certain events that happen that, that, that there's some problems to deal with. But as you were just saying, it's a story of chasing your dreams and overcoming tragedy. And how the human mind deals with that, I'm, I'm quite fascinated by. And it, in some ways, it comes off in a in, in a negative uh, way, um, which often is described as mental illness. In other ways, it comes off in a very, shall we say, a successful way, but doesn't that, which doesn't necessarily mean there hasn't been a lot of um, heartache and hardship that had to be overcome. Then we get to go to the Academy Awards ceremony. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, certainly one of the parts that was, uh, as, we, as we started with today, is my love of the movies. A big event in our household uh, every year is the Oscar night and voting who you think did the best at what their craft was that year. And we get our sheets out and we actually tally and keep score of it. And I just thought it was a really neat way, because this is, they're, they're, it's, it's the night of, uh, as only Hollywood can do it, uh, of presenting the, the stars of, uh, of the movie. And, uh, I thought what a, what a neat forum in order to create a, a pretty exciting part of the story. And an unforgettable ending of your book. Yes, uh, it's uh, it's it's one that you really literally have to read right to the end of the book. It's uh, <laughs> and and I I've kind of found the ending uh, kind of sets up for a book too, um, which I'm deep into now. But uh, the the ending to me is is uh, is something that I'm very pleased with and how it came out. We've been listening to Douglas Gardam. He is the author of his book, The Actor. Doug, tell us how to get your book. Today, um, primarily, it's online. Um, any of the on -time re uh, uh, online retailers worldwide, so Amazon and Barnes & Noble in the States, um, certainly up here in Canada in chapters and in Amazon. Um, but it's across the globe, and it's the easiest way, really, really to uh, easiest channel in order to get it. You can also get it through uh, Universe Direct, which is uh, really the publisher that's helped me uh, put the put the book together and get it out into uh, the public's hands. Thank you so much, Doug, for being with us on iUniverse Radio. Thank you for having me.